in healthcare today, that's one of the uh, gaps that we just haven't been able to fill. It's an employment gap that is huge. Intermountain Healthcare, IHC, uh, they're all on our advisory board and they're like, just, we need more, we need more graduates. So when we had the opportunity to write for the grant, it was like, okay, well, we've got the ability to build capacity and we could easily double, maybe even triple, the number of graduates we have. Uh, we, we got really excited about that idea. We're talking about healthcare coding. What they do is they take a doctor's procedure, they turn it into a set of numbers. Kind of like coding for a computer, but this is just to get, uh, get paid by. So now we have these bachelor degree and associate degree level folks that understand the coding, understand the uh, software, understand how to submit, understand how to reconcile, all of these wonderful things, and everybody's looking for them. They go about as quick as we can graduate them. And we pulled the right group of people together, workforce services, uh, our, our SWIB, the State uh, Workforce Investment Board, uh, employers, our career services, people from our program, everybody that we could think of. We pulled them all together and started brainstorming about, well, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna collect this data and maintain FERPA? Because we got to, it's a requirement of this $2.5 million grant we got. So all they had to do is assign a cohort uh, number to our new students W numbers, which takes the personal identification out of it. They were able to then give us the demographic data, the uh, mm -hmm. academic data in aggregate, so we couldn't identify it with the students, so their rights were protected. They also had a mechanism working through our system of higher education and the Department of Workforce Services to collect wage data as well as employment data. So we just really used the same model and the same um, method. We just had to set it up at different times. And we had to figure out how, what we, how are we gonna count somebody that starts in this semester, the quarter ends, and they go on into the next semester and they don't graduate until the end of the program. And the WIOA funds are set up just for that, for TAA, uh, students as well as anyone that wants to improve their employment circumstances. So we had actually people that were in their two years of a master's program that were working, had a family, and since they were, their master's program was in a high demand, high pay area, the uh, Department of Workforce Services uh, funded their tuition and stipend. Well, we built three new uh, coding programs. They were very high-level coding courses, and they were electives. So those courses ended up going on to Skills Common. So we also did a, a really nice um, web page that had interviews with our graduates and with our employers, um, and they turned out really nice. Problem solving with that team itself is what drove us to say, hey, you know, I really believe we can have a meeting with the dean of uh, uh, Southern Utah University and explain our situation, and they will agree this is a great idea for us to present our coursework to their students. I don't think we would have ever even went down that road if we hadn't been so successful with the synergy that came from the problem-solving group for the data. If you can, uh, no matter what you're negotiating, if you can tie your mission and vision to the mission and vision of the person you're negotiating with and show clearly how it helps them get where they're going, helps you get where you're going, it's a win-win situation, it's hard to say no to a deal like that. And that's, the, that's what we looked at with the data acquisition, with Department of Workforce Services, tuition, and especially with our cooperative agreements.